Okay, let's go back to our six-step motor formula. Now, once we've got the, the motor full load current understood based on the table, and we've got the overload setting selected based on the nameplate information, then we've got the wire size based on step number three, 125% of the full load current, right? Those are the three steps. Step number four takes us to, okay, let's put a fuser circuit breaker in front of this branch circuit. And it says branch circuit overcurrent protection. Now it says overcurrent protection. Take your pen and scratch through the word overcurrent protection because it's truly not being used as overcurrent protection. If you scratch through the words overcurrent protection, it'll make it easier for you to understand. So we're talking about a fuser circuit breaker. Yes, we are, but we're not using it in the fashion that we normally would. We're using it as ground fault or short, ground, ground fault or short circuit protector. It says, shall be selected from table 430.52. It says, first select a type of motor, single phase, three phase, AC, DC, wound rotor, code letter, all that. Then it says, next select the type of protection, where it's a non-time delay fuse, a dual element time delay fuse, an inverse time circuit breaker, or not listed here as an instantaneous trip circuit breaker. Four different things. It says, now select a percentage from the proper column and multiply it times the full load current of the motor. Then it says use table 240.6. Guess what you got glued into the right there? Table 240.6. To select the standard size the code permits. When the value found does not match the standard size, the code permits the next higher standard size. So let's use this 10 amp motor at 240 volts, single phase. 10 amp motor, 240 volts, single phase. What's, what's the impasse, the full load current? Now we're going to size a fuser circuit breaker on step number four. Hold the page with a piece of paper, and let's go to that table, 430.52. Got something glued in right beside it, right? Conveniently. That's that 240.6 table, a standard fuser circuit breaker size, right? Now we're going to make this table easier to understand. We've got four different columns, five basically. The first column is the type of motor. We've got single phase and AC polyphase motors other than wound rotor. Those first two rows, rows go left to right, underneath that AC polyphase selection and above the squirrel cage, I want you to take your dark colored highlighter and make that line straight across. We got a non-time delay fuse selection and we got 300% and 300%. I want you to take, a, take your dark colored highlighter and just make a fence post to segregate each side of that non-time delay fuse. Then we got the dual element time delay fuse Put another fence post in. We've got the instantaneous trip circuit breaker, another fence post. We've got the inverse time circuit breaker, another fence post. Now we can just pick a box, right? Rather than look at this whole table, just pick a box. Now I do want you to know that these are percentages, and we've got a 300%, we've got a 175%, we've got a 800%, we've got a 250%. Draw a percentage sign beside those, that way you know those are percentages. So on your test question, it will tell you which type of these four different items you're going to be choosing from, right? It has to. But it won't tell you the impasse of the motor. You've got to figure that out by using the table we just looked at. That 240 volt fed single phase 10 horsepower motor was 50 amps, right? If we were to use an inverse time circuit breaker, what's our percentage? 250, right. So 250% times 50 amps equals what? 125 amps. Right? Is 125 amps a standard fuser circuit breaker size? Well, we can double, we know, but we can cross check, right? Now, for a 50 amp needed full low current motor, we looked that up, right? On step three, 125% of 50 amps is 62.5. We came up with the number six gauge wire, right? We're going to put a number six gauge wire on what size breaker? 125 amp breaker, six gauge wire. And it's going to trip at how many amps? If we've got the uh, service factor or the temperature rise, to the right settings, 125% of 62 and a half. So at 62 and a half amps, this circuit's gonna go out of play. It's gonna be tripped by the overload relay. It's gonna be placed on a 125 amp breaker, and we're gonna use the number six gauge wire. This is where you're gonna fight with yourself. 125 amp breaker, no, 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 we need 125 amp rated wire. No, you don't. 125 amp breaker for a 50 amp load? No, that's wrong. No, that's right. You get it? Now. Let's say that same question with the 10 amp motor at 230 volts, which starts out at 50 amp full low current. We're going to put on an instantaneous trip circuit breaker. What's our percentage? 800%. What's 800% times 50? 400. Now we're going to have that 400 amp breaker, instantaneous trip circuit breaker, with a number six gauge wire on it. 
for this 50 amp load that's going to trip out at 62.5 amps. Number six gauge wire, 400 amp breaker. You guys with me? That's the right answer on test day. Okay, this is the hardest part. The step number four is the hardest part. 